the next uh, speak uh, is the room temperature observation of the quantum size effect in the photoluminescence of silicon jammer and silicon nanocarms uh, prepared by neutral beam matching. These are the contents of today's topics. Uh, first, I would like to talk about the techniques to enhance the luminescence of silicons and the uh, uh, purpose of this research. Then I move on to the sample preparations, measurement system, and results. In the results, I would like to uh, talk about the photoluminescence spectra of silicon jammer in silicon nanocarms uh, after rapid thermal annealing and its quantum size effect. And finally, I would like to conclude my presentations. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, the silicon is a polarizing material for the electron inks. Uh, however, the uh, luminescence of silicon is uh, in, uh, generally very weak uh, due to the indirect band gap. Uh, this schematic image shows the uh, band structure of the electron hole in a uh, bulk sequence. Uh, since the uh, uh, minimum of the conduction band and the maximum of the valence band is separated in K space. Uh, electron needs to give off a phonon to recombine with the holes. Uh, this process uh, makes the uh, radiative transitions uh, probability decrease. Uh, however, the, when the electron hole uh, localized in a quantum structure like this, uh, the existing probability of the electron and the hole uh, broaden uh, due, uh, due to the uh, uncertain, uh, uncertainty pro, uh, principles. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, it electron and hole uh, it enable electron and hole uh, the combined without phonons. Therefore, the luminescence of silicon can be enhanced by making the, uh, this kind of the quantum structures. And one candidate of the uh, quantum structure is the silicon germanium silicon uh, quantum well. Uh, the lattice mismatch of the uh, silicon and the germanium is only 4%. Uh, therefore, the germanium is the uh, compatible material for the silicon. Uh, due to the strain in uh, silicon germanium layers, uh, the uh, uh, band structure of the silicon germanium silicon quantum well uh, bended like this, uh, called the type two band structures. In this uh, type uh, two band structures, uh, hole are trapped in the silicon germanium layers, and the electron are trapped in silicon layers. Uh, then the localized in localized electron and the holes uh, recombined uh, with the radiating photons. Uh, therefore, the silicon germanium heterostructure can enhance the luminescence. Uh, in the previous works, the optical properties of the silicon germanium uh, silicon quantum well were reported uh, by many researchers. Uh, but uh, the optical properties of the sample etched by uh, silicon germanium silicon quantum well were reported only a few. Uh, in this uh, well, uh, in this report, uh, uh, they investigate the photoluminescence of the this uh, silicon germanium silicon uh, micro disc etched by uh, silicon germanium silicon quantum well. Uh, it, this is the photoluminescence uh, spectrum of this silicon germanium silicon micro disc uh, at the low temperatures. However, they could not observe. Uh, Photoluminescence from the silicon German silicon micro disc at the room temperatures. Now, moreover, the uh, photoluminescence uh, of the uh, photoluminescence uh, with the decreasing of the quantum structures, a uh, photoluminescence peak is shifted. This phenomenon was known as a uh, quantum size effect. Uh, even though they also try to uh, this quantum size effect uh, by reducing uh, this diameter of the silicon German silicon micro disc uh, from one micrometer to 0 0.5 micrometers, uh, the, they could not observe the photo uh, quantum size effect. 
this is thought to be the uh, diameter of 0.5 micrometers is still uh, too large to uh, observe the quantum size effect. Uh, therefore, in this work, uh, we investigate the photoluminescence of the sample, uh, what we call the silicon germ and silicon nanocams. The diameter of silicon germ and silicon nanocams is, is now about uh, 24 nanometers. Uh, then, uh, the purpose of this research is detecting the photoluminescence from the uh, silicon germ and silicon nanocams at the room temperatures. Now, I would like to uh, talk about uh, sample preparations. The silicon germ and silicon heter, uh, uh, heter structure was uh, grown on uh, uh, silicon on uh, silicon on insulator weha by using the molecular beam epitaxy at the uh, Shizaki group. And the sample was uh, etched to form the uh, to, uh, now this nano columns uh, by using the neutral beam, neutral beam at the Samikawa group. At this time, the, uh, uh, by using the neutral beam etchings, we can minimize the uh, introduction of the su uh, surface defects. Uh, this uh, image, uh, these are the uh, uh, transmission scanning electron microscope images of uh, sample sidewalls uh, etched by uh, neutral beam and the conventional plasma. We can see that the uh, uh, sample sidewall were made uh, atomically flat by using neutral beam, neutral beam uh, compared to the conventional plasmas. And finally, uh, we could obtain uh, this idol-shaped uh, narrow combs. The height is the, about 100 nanometers, and the diameter is now about 24 nanometers. And this is a scanning electron microscope image of the samples. Uh, we can see that the uh, Sample was successfully etched uh, by uh, neutral beam etching. Then I will uh, explain about uh, a measurement system briefly. Uh, we use uh, two uh, measurement system. The one is the uh, for the uh, 5K photoluminescence measurement, measurement, and the spectral region is the infrared. Uh, we use a 364 nanometer uh, line of the argon laser as an excitation source. Then the excitation laser irradiates the samples uh, in a gas flow type uh, cluster, and the photoluminescence from the sample was analyzed by fluid transform interferometers. The, uh, the other uh, measurement system is for the room temperature photoluminescence measurement. And the spectral region is visible. Uh, we use the uh, 514 points, uh, 5 nanometer line of the argon laser as an excitation source. The excitation laser uh, was focused down uh, about one micrometer by using the objective lens uh, and irradiated the samples. And the photoemissions from the sample was analyzed by grating and detected by uh, CCD detector. Uh, and these are the photoluminescent spectra uh, of the RZG samples. Uh, the uh, vertical line indicates the photoluminescence intensity and horizontal line indicates the photon energies. And this uh, left uh, side uh, figure shows the uh, photoluminescent spectrum in uh, uh, infrared regions at the 5 uh, kelvins. And this uh, right side uh, figure shows the phot uh, photoluminescent spectra in uh, visible regions uh, at the room temperatures. Uh, we observed the uh, uh, G-line uh, G and its photon replica in the infrared regions. And this is the origin of the uh, G-line, which consists of uh, carbon uh, two carbon substitutional atoms and uh, one substitution uh, one uh, silicon interstitials. These uh, carbon atoms were contaminated uh, during the uh, uh, during the growth of silicon uh, germanium layers, and 
uh, this uh, silicon interstitial atom were uh, generated during the uh, neutral beam etching. Uh, moreover, we could not observe any peaks from the uh, visible lesions. Therefore, we performed the rapid thermal annealing, which annealed the uh, sample very short time uh, by using the flash lamp. Uh, we annealed the sample uh, 900 degrees Celsius at uh, 50 seconds. And this, uh, red, uh, this red line uh, indicates the photoluminescent spectrum of the sample after rapid thermal annealing. Uh, we can see that the G line was uh, clearly uh, disappeared. Uh, it suggests that the, G, uh, uh, the center of G line changes to the uh, non radiative center like this. And this is the uh, photoluminescent spectrum uh, of the sample after uh, rapid thermal annealing uh, in the visible regions. Uh, we observed uh, this uh, below the photoluminescence peak uh, at uh, uh, 1.8 electron volt. To confirm the, uh, this photoluminescence peak is from the uh, silicon German and silicon narrow columns, uh, we performed the next experiment. Uh, to confirm this photoluminescence peak is from the uh, silicon German and silicon uh, narrow columns, we do, uh, dissolved the silicon uh, uh, silicon germanium uh, silicon now comes. First, we performed a 5% uh, hydrofluoric treatment at one minute uh, to remove the uh, uh, natural oxi oxidation layers. And uh, then we uh, performed the, uh, we annealed the sample uh, 780 degrees Celsius at six minutes. And uh, hydrofluoric treatment again. Uh, we repeat uh, this uh, cycle two times. Uh, and this is the scanning electron microscope image uh, before and after this process. We can see that uh, by uh, uh, this process, uh, we can uh, dissolve the silicon German and silicon narrow columns. Uh, and this is the photoluminescent spectrum uh, before and after uh, solution of the silicon jam and silicon uh, now comes. We can clearly see that the uh, photoluminescent peak was uh, disappeared uh, by uh, solution of uh, silicon jam and silicon now comes. Uh, Therefore, we conclude that uh, uh, this photoluminescence peak is uh, due to the uh, silicon German and silicon narrow columns. Uh, next, we uh, try to observe the uh, quantum effects of the, the narrow columns. Uh, to make the uh, uh, silicon German and silicon narrow column thinner, we uh, perform the uh, hydrofluoric treatments. Uh, this, uh, these are the uh, scan electron microscope images uh, of the samples. Uh, this is the sample, uh, AZH sample, and uh, this is the sample after uh, hydrofluoric uh, treatment, and this is the uh, sample after two times hydrofluoric uh, treatment. And these are the uh, histogram of the uh, counts and uh, uh, Diameter measured by uh, measured from the uh, this scanning electron microscope image. <clears throat> we can see that the uh, mean of the uh, diameter uh, uh, become uh, thinner, uh, 24 nanometers to uh, 20 nanometers, and uh, 18 nanometers. And also, uh, the standard deviation is also decreased uh, from the six nanometers and uh, three nanometers. The reason is that uh, uh, this elliptical uh, shaped uh, narrow column was uh, uh, separated into two narrow columns uh, by uh, hydrofluoric treatment. And this is a photoluminescence uh, 
uh, uh, spectra of the th uh, of the three uh, three samples. Uh, green, blue, and the purple line indicates the uh, uh, photoluminescence of the uh, silicon jamming silicon, jam silicon nanocams with the diameter of 24, 20, and 80 uh, nanometer, respectively. We can see that uh, with the decreasing the, of the diameter of the uh, nanocams, the photoluminescence peak was shifted to the higher energies. Uh, therefore, uh, we have successfully detected a quantum size effect. <clears throat> uh, as a conclusion, uh, uh, blow photoluminescence band at uh, 1.8 electron volt was uh, disappeared after a solution of uh, silicon jam and silicon now comes. Uh, we believe that this photoluminescence band is from the silicon jam and silicon now comes. Uh, furthermore, the, this broad photoluminescence band at uh, uh, 1.8 electron volt was shifted with the decrease in the diameter of silicon jam and silicon now comes. Uh, it means that we have successfully observed the size effect of the silicon jam and silicon now comes. Uh, moreover, the uh, G-line was uh, disappeared after rapid thermal annealing. Uh, it suggests that the defects in the silicon jam and silicon now comes was eliminated by uh, rapid thermal annealing. Uh, thank you for kind attentions. Of